right, let's talk about some of the electronics that's involved with putting some of the aftermarket seats into your uh, FJ or Forerunner uh, or similar Toyota vehicle. So what I have in front of me is the uh, electronic bracket holder. Uh, that's pretty much the purpose of this metal part underneath the uh, passenger seat. That's what we're looking at. Uh, this is a airbag module um, that is sitting underneath the seat. Of course, this is the seat belt. Uh, it has a wire coming out and going over over to um, the module itself. All of this circuitry works to allow the FJ to know that in fact somebody is sitting in the passenger seat. So what we have uh, here from Metal Tech is a occupant classification sensor bypass module. And what that is gonna do is we are gonna mount, as previously stated, this switch in the center console there and it has a little symbol there of a airbag either on or off and we are going to mount that so you can turn that on when somebody is seated in that position or off when somebody is not um, so that's the whole purpose of that now one other thing that we're going to do and i'm going to show you uh, the details as we do it because uh, it isn't completely straightforward but the instructions are not too bad in this case we are going to actually allow for this switch also to operate a uh, bypass so that uh, when it is turned in the on position it will uh, basically tell the computer that there is somebody actually in the seated position and the seat belt is actually clicked without them actually having to click their seat belt um, and this is not a big deal for us the wife and I because we both wear our seat belts religiously and I recommend that you do. If you don't, you need to change or fix yourself because that is the silliest thing in the world. Coming from somebody that's been a firefighter uh, for 20 years, I can tell you that the people that have died on accident scenes have always been the folks pretty much that were not restrained. Um, so wear your seat belt. But all right, so I'm gonna stop it here and then I'm gonna do a couple things and then talk about how it went. All right, so what I've done here is I have removed all of the wiring from the electronic uh, bracket there that holds it. So now we have everything laying out separately. Uh, this will allow it to be worked on much, much easier. Uh, the way you do this is just squeeze these little white tabs and also use a, a small flathead screwdriver to push off these little catches, including the catch here on this module to be able to slide it off the bracketry. So what we have done here is we have the module plugged in to the uh, restraint module and then as you can see basically I just took some tape and taped over the end here um, and wrap some tape around there to kind of seal this plug off just in the event that you know dust or grime you know I don't want anything to short that out uh, and then as you can see there's a wire here coming out of the module that is the seatbelt bypass um, and then it goes into this plug here uh, and the instructions tell you how to take the existing wire out and put that wire in and that allows for the bypass um, so then now what we're going to do is this switch right here we're going to take this blank and put it in there all right so there's the finished switch ready to go in the middle position and then one other thing i wanted to mention was um, i just took some gorilla tape and put it across here because those are wires in between and I just didn't want this thing to just be bouncing around down the road I'm gonna zip tie this all in but I didn't want these wires this thing just flopping around and then maybe stressing those connections or stressing those wires out over time so we have simplified the plugs here in the harness just by uh, taking some 
black electrical tape and wrapping it around. These are the four plugs that went to the original four sensors that was in each corner of the OEM seat brackets. And we no longer need those. So we're just gonna simplify that a little bit by doubling those cables up. And then this is the, uh, this is the red wire that we're gonna run up to our uh, switch panel. Um, and then you can see here, that is the module. We're gonna have to find a place to double side uh, tape that or zip tie it to something so it doesn't bang around. Uh, we're gonna run the cable up to the switch panel and then also we're gonna put our uh, heating element for the heated seats which is in also and run the power over to them. All right, so we have the airbag uh, occup occupied seat uh, module down here. We have it wired in, we have it plugged in. We have a, uh, a shielded wire ran up there. We're not actually gonna zip tie it, any of it down until we see the seat in there. And then also we have the other uh, cables going back to the heating element of the heated seats, the two wires that do that. So we can see here on the center console switch panel, uh, the switch there right in the middle and I just wanted to point this out I know it's uh, seems like it's been a little bit redundant But I've been trying to keep all the steps or the footage along the way uh, kind of pertinent So if we see here on the uh, indicator panel to the right of the uh, Where it says passenger you notice how there's nothing on there. That's lit up um, The switch is in the off position currently so I'm going to flip this to the on position and we'll see what happens. Okay, so now it says airbag on. So what we are basically telling the uh, system here, uh, without somebody actually sitting in the seat, this module is emulating, is probably the best way, not really saying bypass, but emulating somebody actually sitting there instead of those four sensors that was in the OEM seats actually uh, indicating that somebody was sitting in the seat. And then one more, and, this, and the reason why I wanna bring this up is because when you get to this point, uh, if somebody was truly sitting in the seat and the key was on, um, in fact, I'm actually gonna start the vehicle. I don't see any reason why I can't. Yeah, I'm gonna start the vehicle, and what that will do also is it will test the seat belt bypass uh, wire that we also installed. Um, if you remember earlier, I was saying that I, I actually did install that option with putting that extra wire into the harness. And uh, as you can see, the seat belt indicator is not coming on and it's also not uh, sounding the alarm saying that the passenger needs to put their seat belt on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the vehicle off before we build CO up in the garage here. Uh, and once again, as we see, it's it did say airbag on. It says airbag on now with the key, the ignition in the keyed position. All right, and there's a reason also why I wanna leave the ignition on here in a little bit because I wanna start tapping that fuse box to get power to the heated seats. And I'm gonna need that to be on to see which ones are keyed on and which ones are ignition keyed off. Uh, before we put our tap -a fuse Okay, so we see the airbag on, and now I am gonna toggle this switch to the off position, and now we should see this indicator say airbag off. And it went out. So the light, uh, the red flashing light that you've seen there momentarily was the computer basically, or the indicator saying, there's no longer a passenger in the seat, so we no longer need to have the airbag armed. Um, I'm just gonna run with it on all the time. The biggest reason um, that this is the way it is is because of child seats. Um, there's other reasons why they had it set up so that it needed 150 pounds to trigger the sensors uh, obviously, a child seat would never weigh that much, and that was the big push. They ne they didn't want airbags going off when people had 
uh, child seats in their front seat. So there was a whole bunch of safety features that came along because of that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the on position and once again, this is the steps that we're going through just to verify that the airbag is arming. Yep, and it says airbag on because we want to make sure that um, by putting these aftermarket seats in here that we're not actually disarming the airbag. I mean, airbags are important. Um, they save lives every day. So we want our passenger to have an airbag. Um, and now we know that the airbag is going to arm like it should and that it's going to fire if we have a collision that warrants the airbag to be deployed. Okay, so not to go in that too much, but it is kind of an important step. And I just wanted you guys to make sure that you knew how to test that you had installed the module and that everything had worked out as planned. All right, so I'm going to try to get this on camera for you guys. Uh, so far, so good. Um, so as you can see there, I have a Adafuse uh, pigtail sticking out. And this was a vacant fuse uh, box. I think I'm going to actually try to move it over there. Well, it don't really matter because it's still going to have to overlap. So uh, that's going to be for our left or driver's side seat, that is. And then I need to check to make sure that this is only coming on with the ignition. So what I'm going to do is, um, if you guys don't have one of these tools, they're not that expensive. You guys really need to get one. It's a KM10. Uh, it's for testing circuits. Yeah, you can do everything from like testing a ground, which I'm going to show you how you do that. You actually push down. So I'm going to touch this and see how it goes green. That means that's a good ground. Um, and then I'm going to test now to make sure that I have the ignition is on. I'm going to make sure that I have 12 point or 12 volts. So I'm going to push up on the arrow and it says 12.2. So that means I do have power and that will be a good circuit. I put a 15 amp um, uh, fuse in this add a fuse. And so that is what we're going to use to splice in to our driver's side seat. So hopefully that makes sense to you. All right, so I am gonna be starting to button up the center console now. Um, might be hard for you to see, but that is there. The lo that is the location where I ran the cables for this, the um, control harnesses for the seat, uh, heated seats. And uh, it, it nicely runs down this left side because there's a guide already in place for cables um, and then pop them out here on the side making sure to put all the cable in the uh, plastic uh, cable protector forgetting exactly what that's called right now so anyways um, and then I have some ground wire that's coiled up I would have liked to shorten that up but I didn't have any more grommets to uh, put for the grounds it's not a big deal because if they do wear through, it's just ground. It just stop working. Uh, won't catch fire or anything else like that. But so uh, I use the two emergency brake mounting uh, bolts right there for the grounds with those tabs that are included, and then the harness over there uh, actually will run underneath the shifter. Uh, there's a nice tab over there that you can zip tie and stabilize that as it comes over and then as it comes down you can uh, zip tie it to your e-brake e uh, indicator so that's where I put it there so I mean you know everybody's gonna do it different everybody's gonna see it differently and decide to do things differently uh, but that's just kinda how I did it um, ran pretty easy ran underneath the steering column tapped it in in that fuse box as I had mentioned earlier and shown you guys uh, and then here um, just got to keep in mind that when the bracket does slide back and forth um, this has to be adjusted still that these cables have to move um, and then I'm gonna mount the um, power relay I'm gonna use these holes right here to mount that so that'd be once the seat is in or just prior, I'm gonna mount that up there before I put the seat in. So I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use probably 
this bracket over here for now so I can get the, the truck back in in uh, commission. But we're looking at uh, maybe using some different brackets, maybe using some planted brackets with the Slilman sliders instead of the OEM sliders and the Metal Tech uh, bracket. So that may change. Most it will be the planted uh, brackets most likely over there uh, because I don't have enough uh, sliders to be able to mount since Metal Tech. Uh, sent the wrong kit and also didn't send enough parts for even if they would have sent the right kit so we won't go into that too much detail we'll keep on track here with the instructional part of this uh, so I'm gonna get ready to button it back up